you know, one thing I'll, I'll give Ephraim is that he, um, he was, he was obsessed, you know, he was had a, a, like a, an obsessive work ethic, you know, like he would think of nothing other than money the entire day. And like, he, he was literally obsessed. Like we'd wake up and he, the second he wakes up, he's like looking at fed biz ops, like over breakfast, you know, before he's like, you know, he's like looking at it, you know, like on his laptop on, on the toilet, you know what I mean? Like that's all he would do. And you know, while he's eating, you know, while he's talking, he, he even told me, he bragged to me that he would, that he loved taking uh, calls from federal contractors while he was like having sex with his girlfriend, you know, that like, he just loved doing it. I don't know why his girlfriend hated it, obviously, you know, but like, he would like, you know, while having sex with her, like he'd get a call, he'd be like, baby, baby, I got to take this. I got to take this, but keep on going. <laughs> you know and he would actually talk to it's to, like he like, really modeled himself after nick cage yeah exactly no he, he loved nick cage he loved nick cage and scarface yeah yeah it's so fucking yeah. did you ever just think to yourself mm. watching him being so obsessed mm. over money 24 7 like what like mm. what why why was he like this was yeah. it was it nature nurture what was it right so it, i thought about it a lot because you know I'm not like that. Right. You know, I mean, it's rare. Yeah, people are like, that, yeah, almost right? nobody is. Uh, don't get me wrong. I like money as much as most people. Right. And, you know, I've always been entrepreneurial and, you know, I, I'm, I am, you know, motivated and I've worked on my own businesses, but the level of obsession that he had was beyond anything I'd ever seen. Even to this day, I've never seen anyone like that, you know, and it wasn't healthy like it and it no. wasn't didn't and it wasn't fun. You know, it was actually very unpleasant, um, you know, working with him was I mean, I'm sure being him was very unpleasant, but working with him was very unpleasant just by extension because, um, you know, he like he expected everyone else to be as obsessed as he was, you know, and he'd get like upset if like, you know you weren't willing to drop everything in your life to chase this, you know, deal that had a tiny chance of like, you know, completing, you know what I mean? And it's like, I have other parts of my life I'm interested in too. It's, this is not the only thing I want to do, you know, so I'm not willing to work literally, you know, 16 hours a day all the time. Now I did, um, especially in the beginning and especially when we won our big contract later, the Afghan contract, because I had to, um, so I was willing to do it if necessary, but it, like, I didn't want it to be like a 24, seven, 365, you know, day thing because, uh, you know, I wanted to live life as well. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it was, it was, um, it, it was definitely unique, you know? So I, I mentioned to you, uh, before mm -hmm. that, uh, a, a, one of my guests on here mm -hmm. met him in prison. Met, yeah, that's right. Met Ephraim in prison. Yeah. And Ephraim convinced him to write his life story. Right. He wrote the life story. Ephraim mm -hmm. got out with it and mm -hmm. used that to sue Warner Brothers. Right. For, for right. the movie War Dogs. Right. Right. Matt Cox. Yeah. And Matt yeah. Cox. Yeah. One of the, yeah. the first thing when I asked Matt, I'm like, how? Because, you know, I asked Matt, I'm like, how accurate is War Dogs to to the story? He goes, mm -hmm. well, he goes, the story is about pack house. He goes, the story is not really about Ephraim. Ephraim's just a character, but for some reason, everyone just remembers Ephraim because of his crazy personality. Sure. sure. Um, but he said, I said, well, how accurate was Jonah Hill's portrayal of Ephraim? He goes, he said, he made him way too cuddly and nice. I agree with him 100%. That's ex <laughs> that's exactly right. Everyone who knows Ephraim will he, say that. He said yeah. that the, the yeah. Ephraim and War Dogs was a teddy bear compared to the real Ephraim. Absolutely. He's absolutely right. They they toned him down. The, the funny thing is everyone's like, oh, was he as, is he as crazy as, you know, in the movie? I'm like, he was way crazier than in the movie mm -hmm. and way of a less nice person than in the movie. Right. Like in the movie, he's kind of charming and... And, you know, as he says, like, he's kind of like a teddy bear. Jonah really softens his care, his real yeah. life character a lot, a lot. Yeah. Um, makes him a lot more likable. They did that on purpose. They're actually, the screenwriter told, so the screenwriter of War Dogs, uh, um, Stephen Chin, uh, he came when they first started writing the screenplay, he came to Miami and like, uh, met with me for like a week and, you know, recorded, you know, interviewed me, recorded the conversations. And he told me while he was writing the screenplay, he's like, look, I'm going to have to tone down Ephraim, you know, you know, and he's like, because it, 
we need to make him likable to the audience. No one's going to want to spend an hour and a half in we the need theater. To sell it. <laughs> yeah, ex- I mean that's how Hollywood works. You know, you need to have a certain formula mm-hmm. uh, so that it appeals to the mass. Uh, you know, uh, to the most people in in you know the population. Mm-hmm. So you know they had to add a certain amount of uh, action. You know, uh, because people like action, they have to have a certain amount of comedy and they have to have a certain amount of like mm-hmm. relationship drama. You know, for the girls who they're you know are getting dragged to the to the movie by their boyfriends. You know, so. You know, so for example, like the relationship drama in the movie, uh, they have, um, you know, uh, me, you know, like lying to my girlfriend about being an arms dealer and she gets super mad and, you know, like dumps me. And like that was like, you know, big relationship drama moment never happened. Right. My girlfriend knew about the whole thing the whole time. She was totally cool with it. She just wanted me to be making money. We just had a child together, you know. Um, So, uh, yeah, but they made that up because they needed they needed to check that box of relationship drama in a movie in order, you know, to appeal to the most, uh, to the biggest audience. Right. Yeah. Right. Another, another funny thing yeah. Matt told me was, uh, <clears throat> one of the most memorable quotes he has from him mm-hmm. when he was writing the, the, uh, life story, the manuscript. Yeah. He said they were sitting in the cell together and he was telling him some of the stories and how he dealt with people. Yeah. And Matt said, he's like, you can't just burn every bridge Ephraim. He goes, yeah. and Ephraim's response was, there's plenty of bridges, bro. That sounds like him exactly, and that's how he acts. So he burns every bridge he ever has. You know, like, like after he screwed me, you know, out of the deal, uh, there were, someone took my place, and then he screwed him, and then mm-hmm. someone took his place, and then he screwed him, and like on and on and on. Like every person he's ever worked with that I know of, anyway, uh, you know, has ended on a very bad note you know and like it feels like he's been cheated by Ephraim right you know that's just how he works one of the first uh going going reeling back again to Mm -hmm. the beginning after the Xbox deal one of the first big arms deals you did was uh to supply the uprising in Nepal is that right so we we attempted to do that um but or I should say Ephraim attempted you guys bid on that no so it was it uh, it wasn't to supply the uprising. It was actually to supply, supply the, the king, king, the king, right? Who was trying to suppress the uprising? Exactly. Uh, if, through one of Ephraim's contracts, uh, contacts, he um, they were asking for like attack helicopters and things like that, and and he tried to you know uh, to put together a, a save the king package, as he called it, um, but it ended up falling through. And I, I don't. I think because peace broke out, <clears throat> I think is what happened. So like, it, there wasn't enough time to do that deal. Did you? Mm-hmm. Did you have any objections? Did you talk to him about that? I mean, like, dude, this is like fucked up. Yeah. I mean, it kind of bothered me, to be honest, because I was like, you know, people are rebelling against a king and, you know, you know, it's, uh, Mm -hmm. you know, it's kind of seems to be supplying the tyrant kind of situation. And are you sure that's even legal? You know, and he's like, he's like, bro, just let me worry about that. Okay. You just keep on working on your fuel contracts. (laughs) Yeah, right. so I wasn't involved in that and right. I didn't want to be. So yeah, yeah, so you guys weren't splitting any kind of profit. It was basically just you would take commission from the exactly. deals that you yeah. that you landed. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I wasn't I didn't own his company <laughs> like any share in his company. He was still doing his own deals. Uh, you were just basically like your individual exactly. broker, yeah. sales guy. Yeah, I was working on a commission, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um Yeah, that's it's interesting. You know, his ability to value money and making deals over mm-hmm. anything else. I feel like mm-hmm. if you're going to be in that business, you have to have that mindset. Yeah. Like you, you, it's a weird moral compass. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, I wouldn't say you have to have that mindset because plenty of people make a, you know, a legitimate living legally and they would argue morally in that business, you know, okay. like, um, there, there's some people who say that, you know, uh, dealing with weapons or ammunition, you know, at all is, you know, morally bad, right? right. You know, right. full stop, right? Mm-hmm. That's, there's, there's those people and I've mm-hmm. met those people and I've gotten hate from them online and all that, you know? People that just hate guns. Period. Yeah, in, in general. Uh, but like, I, you know, I don't think <clears throat> right now most of those people would say that, hey, you know, the people supplying with Ukraine, you know, with weapons to defend themselves from the Russians, are those people bad? I don't think so. Right. You know, yeah, I think those most are the same people that are saying give those, Ukraine more weapons. Exactly. More guns, right. Exactly. You know, because, uh, you know, a gun can kill someone. It could also defend yourself from getting killed. So it's, it's, 
a gun isn't a bad thing on its own. Mm. It's it's a tool, right? Right. It's like nuclear energy it could be could supply power. It could make a bomb. You know, a knife could chop up your vegetables or chop up your neighbor. You know, it's a it could. You know, it, most technology is dual use, and it all depends on how you use it. You know, that's that's the key.